G'day, 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 and welcome back to your daily dose of Karens, Kevins, and the no good, idiotic, silly public free counts with your host, me, the Australian idiot, the guy who knows nothing about nothing, but still decides to give his opinion on literally everything. Let's get into the clips. This person was out getting their nails done in a certain nail salon, and in the middle of uh, doing that, decided to uh, leave and go elsewhere in order to apparently get money out. It turns out that when the person who was doing her nails followed her to wherever she was going, she was going to order some food. Weird. Ma'am, you need to come back and pay. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to post you on the internet. Like, I'm okay. serious. You need to come back and pay. Okay. You cannot get served and walk out my shop I, like I that. Didn't, didn't free. I didn't no, ma'am. Okay. I can okay. fish okay. your nail. No, no. You're going to have to come back and pay. Okay. I'm going to post you on the internet. I'm serious. Okay. You're stealing from my business. No, I'm not stealing from your business. Yeah, so why didn't you pay? I, 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 why didn't you pay when you walk out I'm my shop? Why didn't you pay? I told you why when I left. No, I don't trust you. You need to come back and pay. Or I'm going to post you up. And Elgin needs more. It's only $20, $30 to pay to do the right thing. You get served and you walk out. I said, okay, but I'm not going to talk to you here because this is... This no, you did not talk to me at my business. I asked you nicely to pay. I was polite to you. You walk out. No, I and you think not. I'm not going to follow you. This lady gets served in my business and she took walk out. And she over here ordering pizza. Yes, yeah, because that was especially wise going, yeah, I'm gonna go get some money out of the ATM. Like it's it's one of those things where I would you wanna make sure they had money first before you did their nails, but I also get the idea of not worrying about that too much. I don't know. Interesting thing there, but it's quite funny. If you're trying to run away from paying your bills, you don't hang around in the same complex where you're going to be followed by the person you fail to pay bills to, only for them to catch you going to buy something else instead, which is kinda of funny and very, very stupid. Here we have a pair who have completely missed their flight, and so rather than accepting that, oops, we stuffed up and maybe find a way to delay the flight, let's start yelling at the people who would be able to help us with that situation. Because that's a great idea. I'm a military person, I go to start trouble with people. I understand that, but it was already Can I please go on my flight? I gotta go to work tomorrow. That's that's right here. Right here. You didn't even try to ask anybody, man. You sitting right here and not doing nothing. Please let me. Ask somebody first. Do that. You know, usually they, if you talk to these staff nicely, let them know what's happened, exactly why you're late and all these other reasons, I'm sure they would have been able to find a way to get you on the next available flight where they would have had a position to get you on. But unfortunately, I doubt they're going to be too willing to help you in the situation, considering that you're doing exactly this. You're going off of them. You're yelling at them because apparently it's their fault they didn't quadruple, quadruple, uh, five times check you, to potential check you, you're here before they let the flight go. There's only so many times they can check these type of things, you know? Here we watch a guy who has a very interesting interaction with the local police. So he gets pulled over because the police officers behind him has suspicions that his tint is not legal. So it goes into this entire conversation because, you know, they don't immediately check this thing they've pulled them over for. Well, the officer decides to ask some questions, what's your occupation and all that. And at a certain point, the passenger, who's the owner of the car, doesn't want to answer certain questions. And one of them being that he doesn't want to answer what's in the bags in the back seat. Because to him, it doesn't matter at this point in time. And as well, they don't need to search it in any way, shape or form. So because of that, the officer makes an attempt to get him out of the car to detain him for, quote, officer safety. Here's the clip. Ask me whatever they want. I'm not stepping out this car unless they pull me out of it. I know. Open the store. Why do I need to get out of the vehicle? I'm taking you out of the vehicle. For what reason? Officer safety. What law did I break? In the bag. Can I get your name and badge number, please? Barboza 5191. And you, officer, name and badge number? 4674. So if I don't get out the vehicle, I am what? Being detained or, or subject to arrest? You're being detained. Detained for what? I just want to know what I'm being detained for. Being detained for officer safety. Officer safety? That's not... What law is that? What what crime have I committed? You have to step out and have a conversation with them, ma'am. Yeah, but what crime have I committed, though? 
I haven't committed no crime. He said he stopped me over for tents. I told him to, to, to check, check the tents. Give me a ticket if he has soon, I'll be on my way. Not yet, no. I obviously just got here. You want to put this down a little bit? I don't feel safe, officer. I don't, say you don't I feel know. safe with I me? I do not feel safe to at all. To talk to me? No, not at all. all. Right. So that's at 100 right now, right? Okay. Sorry, it's rated 35. Okay. So it's legal? Yes, sir. Stay in the car, right? I, we have no plans of leaving. What's up? We have no plans of leaving. Whose car is this? It belongs to me. How come you're not driving? Well, because I had him drive. I had a long day today, so I told him to take over. He's going to drop me off at my place, and he's going to take my car. And I'm staying, I'm staying with the car. What's that? I got to work on it. You're working on the car? Yeah, he's my personal mechanic. Personal mechanic. Yep. Personal mechanic. What's wrong with the car? Nothing. He's just going to add some modifications to it. That's okay. all. All right. What's in the bag? In the bag right here? The, yeah. the duffel bag? Yeah. A bunch of cleaning supplies for my vehicle. Okay. You didn't want to show him? Uh, the officer? Yeah. I mean, I don't see why I have to. You don't. You don't have to, but usually when people have cleaning supplies and an officer asks to see it, they just show them. No, I understand. I don't want to make you guys' job any difficult than what it already is. But personally, I don't really like answering questions. And when he came up, honestly, I just felt threatened. And honestly, I don't feel safe with neither of you two being here. Okay. And him trying to force me out of my vehicle is very unlawful because I haven't committed any crime. So I don't see why I should be detained for any reason. Okay. So if he feels like my tents are too dark, he could have wrote me my ticket, did what you just did, officer, yeah. and I could have been on my way. And you're not trying to cause problems with us. Well, because I'm being is. honest with you, I do feel unsafe. What do you feel unsafe about? Wait, we got two police officers, armed, two armed police officers. Are you kidding me? I would, I mean, and, and, and let's be honest, the history of cops and, and what's going on lately, it, it doesn't look good. Okay. It just doesn't make me feel safe at all. Okay. Am I good to go? Yeah. Look, I personally would have been like, yeah, sure. Uh, it's just this item, this item, this in the bag. There's not really much else in there. And maybe, depending on how I feel the day, and depending on the police themselves, I might be willing, like, sure, you can take a brief look, whatever. But ultimately, I also completely understand why you would refuse it. And also, it's your right to refuse it. You, you don't have to accept a search. Heck, the only way they can force a search out of you is if they have a warrant to do so. Like, it's just one of those things. They pulled you over because they thought your tint's not legal. And when they've checked it, it turns out your tint is perfectly legal. So at that point, it's kind of just let you go and move on because th the thing you thought they were doing illegal, they weren't. So let's just move on with everyone's days and you go and start tracking down more important people or pay attention to people who are speeding or other things on those lines, not me with my tint that doesn't look quite legal. This clip comes from a guy who trains service dogs and while well, he's gone down to this local a pizza shop here to have some food with one of the service dogs that he's currently training. And the person who's working there, Lucas, the ma who's apparently a manager as well, decides like, nope, that's not happening. You have to sit outside with your service dog. You're not allowed inside with your service dog, which if you know anything about these laws, you know, that's kind of discriminatory. Anyway, here's the clip. We don't have to, not to call the cops uh, again. I told you it was a service animal. Um, can I get a menu, please? Do you have papers for the service animal? I don't have to have papers for the service animal. We don't allow dogs in here, period. No matter what. Even if it it's a service animal, you can seat them outside if you want to. But it doesn't matter. Can I please get a menu? No, sir, you can't. Uh, you're violating federal law. Can I get a menu, please? No. Can I get your name? My name's Lucas. Okay. Can I please get a menu? Are you going to order food? Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you to sit outside because you have a dog. Uh, no. That's how this works. Yeah, that's not how that works. It is how this works. We don't allow dogs inside no matter what. If you have a service animal, we allow you to sit on the patio, on the leash. So if you want to sit outside, uh, you're welcome to. These are customers, right? Correct. Okay. Can I get a menu, please? Absolutely not. Well, you're violating federal law. We don't allow dogs inside, unfortunately. You don't have that right. Can I get a menu, please? You have to tell everyone to leave the restaurant. PTSD service dog. PTSD? Yeah. Yes, but you're not getting it. How am I supposed to know that's what I'm doing? Look at that. I told you that. 
It's a felony for me to tell a lie. Apparently the owner of the store showed up afterwards and apologised to the guy for this entire interaction and the mess about this and he said that he will educate his staff members moving forward. He'll grab, even order something off Amazon which are pamphlets that explain the laws around service animals and things on those lines. Apparently our manager is not going to lose his position which... I would say this might not be something I would personally fire someone over but at the same note... It is technically a federal offence and could cause a lot of issues for the store if the person behind who owned the service dog got the police involved in any way, shape, or form. So, I don't know about that one. Either way, let's lie. In this next clip, we've got a very interesting confrontation between a worker and a customer at a fast food restaurant. Huh? I ordered chicken tacos and I double checked when I got to the window. No, so I'm not gonna calm down. I got it. You don't I understand you don't I do I do not I really you don't, don't understand agree. how serious this I is. Understand that. You don't understand that I'm gonna be okay. Huh? I'm gonna give you a bite. I didn't I didn't ask you to come over here. I just asked for a my manager. I'm being very rude. Now, I'm not 100% sure what precisely happened in this clip. I'm going to guess off of what we do here that the order was incorrect, which then leads me to the second thing. Wait a minute, did this guy go through the drive-thru, get his order, and then when he realized something was wrong, instead of sitting in the drive-thru causing a ruckus that way, he parked and got out of his car and went inside to get things fixed? Oh my god. Is the human race starting to heal a little bit? Like, I swear, I just did a 40 minute video the other day where I just watched so many people just stop in the middle of drive throughs and cause a lot of mess. This guy actually has some form of human decency. Good God. In the sex of Karen Blue, she's doing a world of good by pulling a chicken cage, a chicken inside of a cage, back to the undercover area rather than leaving the chicken out in the sun. And then goes off with the uh, owner of this pet, of this animal, when they come out and go, What the hell are you doing? News flash, when it turns out you're, when it's not your animal, maybe you should figure out things before you start doing something stupid. And then when you get told for doing something stupid, you don't just scream your head off and go off at someone and then say that, No, you can't leave animals out in the sun. That's just wrong. It's rude. It's terrible. It's like, what the hell? It's none of your own business in the first place. But furthermore to that, if you have no idea how to take care of a fucking, of this type of fucking animal, then why the fuck? you're trying to act like you are like holy shit our guy behind the camera here he's busy doing his job which is currently burying a cable for some form of internet thing that goes into a box that's in this ease public easement area in front of this guy old man's yard anyhow the old guy is curious and what in the world's happening because apparently something happened a few weeks ish ago where some mexicans came in and did some work there and he didn't really get much out of them because they apparently couldn't speak english which we're starting a bit rough, but anyway, it's just some curiosity, right? Right? Doesn't slowly devolve into annoyance for no reason. I am being harassed by this person. I don't know who he is, but... You gotta be retired. <laughs> you wish. 
You got to be retired. Everybody wishes they were retired. You got to have something else better to do with your time. I'm watching you. Now you got me nervous. I don't know if I should call the police. Call the police. That'd be great. I don't know if I should call them. You should call them. I just am asking questions. That's all I'm doing. So what's going on? What's the problem, sir? So, so this is something that's ongoing. So if it's ongoing, that means you had a problem existed before I got here and you addressing your problem with me. Is that what I'm, that's, that's... Uh, you know, I don't have an executive in front of me to talk to. I have somebody digging in my yard. I come to ask some questions. When they came and laid this stuff, you already knew that it was potentially going to be something when they put this. The, the people that came out here before were Mexicans, they barely spoke English, and I was like, what is it? And they're like, AT&T. Do you have AT&T? Do you have AT&T? I have AT&T uh, phone. You have AT&T phone. So if you have AT&T phone, that means that it's not going to this box. It's probably on somebody else's property, which means that this is how it goes when you're in this. This is the easement that they said for me, sir. I almost finished with my job. I came through here, and I'm almost done. Okay. I can stay over here. No, you, you do what you need to do. I can stay over here and try to get it off your property, sir. But as long as that box is on your easement, sir, technically, I mean, by law, there's nothing that... I don't care about law. I, 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 I'm trying to find out information. And I, I appreciate that you're doing a job and you don't want to argue with an old man. I appreciate that. But... This is my yard. I'm trying to find out what's going on. I come to ask you some questions. You're like, I'm working. You need to go work. You asked me, what was I doing? I gave you the reason why I was here, to bury the what cable. What you said is. And then I gave you the easement. The easement. This it's, is my property. I can do what I want. I didn't tell you that. I told you, as when you have, when I'm on this easement right here, I have so many feet from that concrete right there that I can work off of. And this thing, not only this gas, and everything else run along this easement. Yeah. If the gas company came out here to fix some stuff, you won't tell them to stop. Because no, but this I is... would ask them what they're doing. And I told you. Yeah, but you told me like this. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Go away. No, nah, I didn't tell you that. That's, I, you, how, that's how it came off. That's how you that's how you perceived it. That's how I perceived it. That's that how you perceived, how perceived it. it. But I'm here to do a job. I understand that you're working. Right. You're in work clothes. Right. I'm not an idiot. I understand this. And you're defending yourself by saying, I'm working. Go no, ahead. I told you what I'm doing. I don't have to have this conversation with you, sir. No, you don't. You're, you don't. You're right. I can slide, like, you, you can get some form of reasonable belief of the doubt that the initial reason the old guy approach may not have been for any form of racist intent, but the continued badgering and annoying the guy who's just trying to do his job for a fair bit after you get the initial information just seems like a bit unnecessary to some form of degree and potentially, I don't know about you, maybe a wee bit targeted, I don't know, it, it's one of those things, like yeah, it's weird to see someone doing work in your front yard, but at the same time, if it's in the area where it is a public easement, there is jack you can do. It's just... That's life, man. <laughs> like, I, I've dug into these laws and stuff beforehand with how the footpaths and public easements in houses in America works, and it's so convolutedly complicated because it varies so drastically depending on the state, county, and town that you live in. It's wacky. But if it's public easement and they're laying lines for internet and stuff along those lines, then, I mean, it's gonna happen. I don't see why it's the end of the world. Oh, he's doing his job. He told you that they're laying some line for AT&T, and that's it. realistically all you need to know. If you are really that desperate for more information, then call AT&T. I'm sure they've got support lines, right? Hopefully. I don't know. It's just like, leave this poor man alone. He's just doing his job. Like, leave him be. In this next clip, we got a guy who probably just finished uh, a late night graveyard shift and is having some food sitting in the car park of a public park at one in the morning. Cops are coming up saying he's got doing some suspicious behavior. Watch how to handle the Karen police when you're just trying to enjoy your burger. Suspicious. I think not.
Hey, what the f are you doing, man? Are you trying to open my door? Well, you were shining in mine. Okay, well, mine is pointing down too. What do you want? What do you want? Suspicious? Why? What? It's 1.41 in the morning every day. What's suspicious about 1.41 in the morning? It's 1.41 in the morning every day. You say the public park? There you go, you say the public park. So again, what the f are you trying to open in my door for? Okay, turn off your lights. You got 200,000 lights on me. Not with your attitude. What's yours? What's your name? You have a badge number? Are you trying to have a consensual encounter? I'm John. I am John. John. You can hear me now. Okay. What do you mean difficult? I'm having a hard time communicating with you. Why do you even want to communicate with me? I'm eating my burger. Leave me alone. Eating a burger is suspicious. Eating a burger is... My lights are on. My position lights are on. My headlights are off. I don't want to point headlights to the traffic. My position lights are on. You're ruining my dinner. Sir? Not the other one. Excuse me, sir. Your name, please. Can you give me your name, please? Can you give me your name, yeah, please? Hard. Get your hand out of my car. What the f are you doing, leader, in my car? Tell me your name. I'm asking for your name. I'm not familiar with the English alphabet, sir. I'm asking for your name. What is your... Do you have a badge number or ID number? Huh? Thank you. And what was yours? Thank you. There's just one thing I want to query. Has this police officer, does this police officer not understand the whole fact that police are not the only people that work graveyard shifts, that other people do work graveyard shifts that finish at like pretty late in the evening and then they're probably going to go out and get some food from whatever fast food restaurant is still currently open, take a park somewhere where they can legally park and then just eat their food before heading home? Is that not a thing that they're familiar with? Is that not a concept they understand? Oh, you're, you're sitting in the car park of a park at one in the morning that's suspicious behavior because your position lights are on but your actual headlights are off that's suspicious behavior it's so dumb like can a man not eat his food in peace like christ almighty just go home stop being an asshole is next up we got an employee who must have just been having a very bad day or maybe this is a common occurrence but he decides to just start treating customers like crap you got nothing wrong Rude with me. Yeah, that's how you talk to veterans. They talk to me like that. My father was just you defending his wife. Yeah. You got rude with me. 
We asked you something. You could have said you weren't an employee. I tried to help you out. No, you did not. You told oh, it's over here. here. Oh, we're out. Oh, I'm not even an employee. Guess what? I don't have to sit here. No, you don't. But you don't have to be rude to customers. I wasn't being rude. I was trying yes, to help you Yes, you were. You, you, didn't, you couldn't tell me you didn't know where they were. I was trying to help you out. That's where no, you No, you weren't. Them. No, they didn't know what it is. Yes, it's yes, on it the is. opposite side. No, it ain't. Come on. I'll tell you. Good. Disrespectful. I you like that. Thank you. Yeah, keep talking. Thank you. you are. <laughs> that customer's absolutely right. You don't have to treat people the way you're treating them. And he's running now. Facebook. Look, look, now he's still running his mouth. What's going on over here? I asked the gentleman where something was. He told me the totally wrong aisle. So I came back and I asked- So what sounds like has happened here is that this person's directed down them, them down to a certain aisle for a certain item. Turns out the item's not down that aisle, so when they went back to let them know, the worker was a bit rude about it and caused this massive kerfuffle. That's what I'm gathering here. Either way, it's one of those things where I, I don't get how- I don't care how bad of a day you're having, you still should try and maintain a certain level of professionalism. If you're unable to maintain that type of thing while you're working, then it's probably not a great idea to be working that day, or just try and avoid being on the floor where you're going to have to deal with customs, like, or something on those lines, like, I, I, I get it, you're having a bad day, but taking down the customs is just a bad idea and will probably lose you your job. It, it is what it is, man. With this clip, basically the uh, person behind the camera was recently say, recently stayed at this hotel. We don't know how long ago this was, but when they stayed and left, they accidentally left a bunch of clothes there. And fast forward to now, basically it was bitten a lost and found for a temporary amount of time. And one of the employees said, yep, we'll make sure it stays here until the 15th or the 16th, which is the time you said you'd get here. And on the 15th, it turns out that someone else has thrown those clothes out. And now we have this clip here. That you threw my clothes away, yes or no? Yes. He did it. Was, so your did. employee, I mean, your employee told me on the phone. Been. Okay, so yeah, just so I know, been. your employee told me on the phone yesterday. I assure you, we'll keep your clothes until you come on the fifteenth or sixteenth. So you're saying on the fifteenth, you knew I was coming and you threw oh, them away. We didn't know. We didn't know. But did you? We didn't know. None of us. But you're a housekeeper, right? Yes. And you took my clothes one by one and threw them away. We're not supposed to keep them that long. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't you think it's a big coincidence? Did you, I, don't I, you think we, it's we, a coincidence that on the 15th know. you threw my clothes um, away? It's a coincidence, all right, because we didn't Is know. Is it just a big coincidence that we on the know. same day that I was Why coming to get them, you threw them away? Just go on the, uh, go ahead and file a report, so apologize, do whatever you want to do. And then this many weeks we kept, she did not come. So until, not I'm not, I don't live here, sir. How can I come here? What can I do for that? I don't know if it's just me, but when it comes to leaving hotels after my stay there, I'm a bit of a paranoid person who just double checks, triple checks, quadruple checks that I haven't left anything behind. Checking all the drawers, all the rooms, everywhere to make sure that I've got everything that is mine packed up and ready to go so I don't have a case like this happens. Obviously, there's going to be challenges where that happens. Now, unfortunately, um, we don't really have a good time scale on how long the content supposedly stayed in the lost property section. Now, according to the housekeeper here, it was there longer than what they usually would keep stuff in housekeep in the lost and prop, the lost and found section, or wherever they hold this stuff. So it either seems to me that the person who said that they'll make sure it stays there has failed to do their job properly and failed to make sure this stuff was put aside and had something marking that, hey, it will be collected on this day or this day. If it hasn't been collected by the end of this day, then feel free to get rid of it type deal or something along those lines. Unfortunately, in this case, it's been thrown out, whether it be because that wasn't done, where there wasn't, it wasn't put aside and marked it, hey, they're coming to get this, they'll be getting it in this day, or whether it just be that it did, was there for too long and the housekeeper just didn't care anymore because, you know, it's been there for long enough that it shouldn't be there anymore. 
it honestly just leads me to ask the question is like, would a hotel off like if you were to pay for the shipping, wouldn't they offer just to send it to your address type deal? Like, I know that that can occur with luggage that gets missing throughout a flight. They will, if they find it, they will send it to your address if you query them for it. So, wouldn't that happen in this situation here? Again, I've never had this type of thing where I've left something behind and wanted it back. So, I've never been through the experience. So, yeah, I guess I'll just ask, what are your thoughts in the comments down below? In this clip, we've got a Karen who's attempting to get a pair of scooters for cheaper than what was initially offered, and when she doesn't get her way, decides to resort to violence. You know, I want to question what's going through the kid's mind right now, watching her mother absolutely go crazy over these pair of scooters, trying to steal them out of their hands, trying to kick these people, trying to do all these random things, and then when she still doesn't get her way, throws the drinks at them whilst being recorded. I, I, I just want to question, like, why do people think this is ever a good idea, and why do it in front of your kids? Oh, they probably don't care enough to even think about those consequences. In this next clip, this guy absolutely loses it over getting a small drink instead of a large. Someone should give her a raise. She's a raise. She's clearly dealt with this type of shit before and just understands exactly how to get a customer to calm the fuck down. Now, I think it's just one of those situations where it's like, maybe he did ask for a large when ordering, but the person who was putting in the order accidentally put in a small. He may not have even paid for the large size based upon what she says is on the receipt. But at the end of the day, it's just one of those things. Slip-ups can happen. If he just handled it calmly and just like, hey, uh, I thought I ordered for a large, you know? 
sorry to annoy you about it. It's just uh, it was, I thought it was a large. And then they could go through this exact same thing. Just like, like okay, cool. It looks like so I put it in wrong. We'll fix that up for you. Cool beans. It's like I feel like people just forget that if you handle these, if you go up, if someone stuffs up your order, nine times out of ten, they're not doing it with malicious intent. So if you ask nicely for them to correct the mistake, they'll happily do so. Not this type of shit. Christ. I got super lucky, lucky that there was someone there who knew how to calm him the hell down and he still got his large drink. That person deserves a raise. <laughs> and next clip we got a mother who is very upset about a Karen old worker at Walmart because she assumed that her six-year-old son was trying to steal something. Because he picked it up, she followed my child and tell me, told me she's, he's not allowed to pick it up. What'd you say? My child picked up a pair of sunglasses and yeah. she followed him. So basically, as he was walking, she followed him. She left her post to follow him because she picked up he picked up some glasses. Mm -hmm. He's not allowed to pick that up. Well, if he was gonna buy them, he's allowed to pick them up. Right. It, did he grab the glasses? I mean, yeah, he grabbed them, but she said he's not allowed to grab them, and I'm trying to figure out why she can't. He can't grab them. Did you think that he was gonna okay? steal them? I thought he was. You thought uh, what? You thought yeah, what? Never mind. You no. Say just it again. Go. Say it again. You thought you what? what? He I'm was not gonna, gonna steal argue them. With you. you just told your employee you thought he was gonna steal them. A six-year-old child. You thought he was gonna steal them. Did he not? Did she not just say that? Please. Did she just say that? She did. Say she that, did just say that. That my six-year-old child was gonna steal them. You literally just said that. No, it's no sorry. He's six years old, so you really thought my child was going to steal a pair of glasses? He is six years old. You literally followed my child. You literally just followed my child because you thought he was going to steal some glasses. Why? Is it because he's black? Is it because he's black? You know. But you literally just told your co-worker you followed him because you thought he was gonna steal some damn glasses? Man, I feel bad for the other Walmart workers that were there just listening to the story. They were like the face on the other lady, she's just like, oh, oh god, she's done it again. She's caused some drama because she has no idea how to handle things. Ugh. And now we have to deal with this. And I just love how the entire time the old lady is like First off, you know, don't worry about it, and then just doesn't apologize at all. Like I, I feel like the situation could have been over smooth. It was like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just doing my job. Got to make sure that people don't steal things. I'm sorry if you took offense to that. It is what it is. Instead, she just sits there, ignores them in this entire conversation, and then walks away. I can guarantee you the employees weren't uh, too happy and probably talked to her after this event. I'm just like, well, what the hell oh, are you doing there? Like, what? <laughs> God. So Buddha Carrie doesn't appreciate being recorded because she doesn't like being held responsible for her own actions inside of a post office. Why don't we just go to the ru rules? The r okay. Come on, let's show you the rules. Okay. So I, I'm, and they're on the wall. You see? What? Say it. He's, he's right. He's right. Hi, can you please explain this um, this lady that we have the right to video record in the lobby? Uh, he can, she can handle the video too. Very nicely to not record me. You're in a public place. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. And there's, there's no reason that there's no you don't have that right to privacy when you're in a public place. Oh, oh. that's all. Thank that's you. All. You you are the man. You are the man. Well, What's your name, sir? Just don't interrupt. I no, no, no. Should interrupt, Mike? No, no. I'm just I'm just really and... happy to have you here. What's your name? Okay, my name's Craig. Cra Postmaster Craig. Mm -hmm. Craig. You're, you're an example? I mean, you're in a government-funded agency. It's a public place under most requirements, so uh, there's not much you can do. You can be recorded in there. You don't have that privacy because it's still technically a private, pl a public place. So uh, shame on you. <laughs>